In the first few scenes of the movie, we get to meet our main protagonist Jin Mori, an exciting, playful, yet supernaturally willed teen. He wakes up suddenly to find that he is late for the regional martial arts tournament, the god of high school, and hurriedly gets on his way. On his way, Mori finds that an elderly woman had been robbed of her purse, and he feels compelled to help the woman recover her purse. So he decides to chase the thief. Yu Mira, the hearse of the Moonlight Sword style, looks to find her way to the fight arena where she aims to compete for the title as well. Unfortunately though, an unsuspecting Jin Mori loses control and crashes his bicycle onto her face breaking her glasses. Mira is not impressed however and follows after him to deal with him but she is pacified when she finds out that he did crash into her in a bid to recover the old woman's purse. She then decides to team up with Mori to stop the thief but the thief however proves to be too tough to catch as the chase goes on and on. Enter Handewi, who like Mori and Mira is a contestant in the tournament and is making his way to the arena and is noticing the theft on the street that morning on social media. The chase happens to come across his path and to the greatest surprise of the scampering robber, Handewi meets him with a skull cracking right fist punch that sends bike and man flying. Jin Mori and Yumira look on an off hand day we strength and technique. This heralds the meeting of the three who will later become best friends. Down at the arena, the three get into a conversation and end up introducing themselves to begin an uncanny relationship. The tournament is about to begin and the announcer introduces the contestants to the spectators and explains that the competition is a no holds bar fight except that weapons are not allowed. He also says that each contestant stands to proceed to the national stage of the God of High School competition as well as get a special wish granted should he or she win. The contestants are also fitted with a device that is able to monitor their performance and state of their vital organs. Nanomachins that are able to restore and treat their bodies when they are injured during the fights are also introduced into their bloodstream. The fight is declared open but much to the amazement of everyone. The first round is an elimination battle royale, and the contestants immediately get to work picking off on fighters they don't particularly like or think would be an easy squeeze. The first round comes to a conclusion, and some contestants are eliminated. On their way home, the three high schoolers get talking, and Jin Mori pops the question on their motivation for fighting in the championship. In his characteristically funny way, Jin Mori says he's in the fight to get stronger as fighting with stronger people would make him Hande We reveals that he is in the fight because he pay for the treatment of his close friend who was at the point of death. Yumira however discloses that she is determined to fulfill her father's dying wish, which was to establish her family's sword academy and preserve the Moonlight Sword legacy by winning the competition. The next day, the fight resumes. Remaining contestants are paired against their opponents. The fighters easily brush off their opponents and proceed to the next round. Just for offs though, I'm sure you'd love to meet this guy, Baek Song Hyu and his data-driven fight strategy. He picks off his opponents by taking advantage of scientific data gathered about them. The next round is pretty straightforward as the likes of Mori, Mira, and Daewi win easily. However, the fight between Tai Chi expert Go Gamdu and Kei Man Sok turns out to be feisty. Earlier, Manchik had gotten into a spat with Go Gamdu. And during their match, he easily beats Gamdu, but instead of letting him go, he is bent on ridiculing him and inflicting serious injury on him. Jin Mori is not happy with this and he interferes in their fight and has to face a penalty as a result. The tournament's administrators decide to punish Jin Mori by having him fight one of the commissioners, who are members of the tournament jury, chosen by virtue of their extraordinary strength and fighting ability. Rather than panic, the spunky Mori is all the more excited that he would get the opportunity to fight a stronger person. Meanwhile, a member of Korean Parliament and head of the tournament's administrators, Park Mujin discovers that Jin Mori is the grandson of Jin Tai Jin, South Korea's strongest and most accomplished war hero and also the carrier of a powerful fighting ability known as the Tiger Cub. He is curious to know if Jin Mori has the Tiger Cub power passed down to him from his grandfather or better still, the custodian of the Key of God. He gives Jin Mori some mysterious fruits that only a human with supernatural abilities will survive after eating them. To clarify his hunch, sadly or should I say fortunately, Mori is not the kind of chap that would pass up the opportunity to cram down on any piece of chow and eats the fruit without a second thought. The fruits have some effect on him and causes him to vomit blood and he appears to die. The next day at the arena, everyone including the commission awaits Jin Mori to arrive the ring for his fight. Much to the relief of most, Mori finally arrives the ring confirming Mujin's suspicions about his extraordinary ends. Surprisingly, 
the announcer Shin Boggs and states that Morris' match with the commissioner will be a handicap match and that Jin Mori would be declared the winner if he succeeds in knocking the commissioner down at all. Much to the amazement of everyone, with just a seemingly mundane kick and punch, Jin Mori has the commissioner down and is declared the winner. Feeling rather humiliated, the commissioner unveils his chariot, a carrier-specific supernatural power borrowed from heavenly beings and otherworldly powers to enable the one who wilds and have an advantage in combat. Fortunately or not, though, Park Nugent intervenes and the commissioner, Q, is restrained. I say fortunately or not because Mori could possibly have matched the commissioner regardless as such is his strength and unpredictability. The number of contestants in the God of High School tournament has now been whittled down to four. Yu Mira, Hande Wei, Jin Mori, and Beyond Jehi. Hande Wei gets to square off against Yu Mira, and Jin Mori is to fight Jehi. Before the semifinals of the preliminary round can begin, however, Yu Mira has to deal with the distraction of getting married to a man named Sun Jin, a supposed martial artist and sports business mogul. He promises Mira that he would use his influence to increase the popularity of the Moonlight's Ord style even abroad. Mira is swayed by the idea as she had always wanted the Moonlight's Ord style to be well known and established worldwide. She decides to step down from the God of High School competition and marry Sun Jin instead to fulfill her dreams. Jin Mori finds out and is not impressed. He suspects foul play on the part of Sun Jin's intentions to marry Yu Mira, and he confronts Mira about the idea, but her mind is made up. The day comes for the wedding to be conducted. With the help of Han Daewi, Jin Mori disrupts the wedding and Daewi, and Sun Jin get into a fight. It turns out that Sun Jin wants to keep the Moonlight Sword and its successor for himself, and that he is also a member of NOX, a secret fraternity who wants to obtain the key and gain absolute supremacy over the world as well as bring God's jugged men upon the earth. Mir realizes the danger and repels him with the Moonlight Sword, but Sunjin manages to escape taking the sword with him. It's about time for the semifinals, and Han Dae-wee takes on Yu Mira. An enormous amount of rage takes over Dae-wee, and he beats Yu Mira so mercilessly that everybody in the arena is stunned. This was because he was desperate to get the win so he could get the nano machines to treat his dying friend, Wu Song Tae that were promised him by Park Nujin should he win the semis and the final. Jin Mori makes light work of Beyond Jehi in the second semi-final and proceeds to the final himself. The final is between Han Dae-wi and Jin Mori. The match is a spectacle as both fighters are as strong as the other. Each fighter pulls out several secret moves from their arsenal, but both fighters are determined not to lose. Han Dae-wi is spurred on by his desire to win for his friend, but while they fought, Park Nujin delivers the news that his friend, Wu Sun Tae, had died before the nano machines could do any work. The news left Dae Wee heartbroken, and even though the fight continued, he didn't put much of an effort in it as he no longer had anything to fight for. He became encouraged, however, after Yu Mira brings him a letter Wu and decides to put up a fight in his honor, but in the end, Jin Mori is too strong an opponent and eventually defeats Han Dae Wee with his powerful secret move, Jin Mori Original. Jin Mori is declared the winner and will be the one to represent the Seoul region in the National God of High School Tournament. But something happens. In order to discover who has the key in him, the rules are adjusted by the organizers to allow the top three participants from all of South Korea's regions compete in the National God of High School competition, meaning Mori, Daewi, and a third fighter will represent Seoul. Yu Mir became the third member of the team after winning a playoff fight against Bjork J. Meanwhile, the secret group Knox intensify their efforts to obtain the key and win the battle for supremacy by assassinating key members of Park Mujin's administration. They kill the announcer Sim Bongs and proceed to lay their hands on the others. The assassin who killed Sim Bongs is particularly obsessed with killing the commissioners in order to impress the leadership of the group. He attacks Q at his house and appeared to have the upper hand until Q fought back, activating his chariot and using it to decimate him. Just as Q is about to deliver the final blow, Priest Exley and Saturn come to Drake's rescue. Exley and Saturn are the ones originally sent by Knox to kill Q. A heated battle ensues between the three and Q is almost killed, but for the intervention of Commissioner O. A proper fight begins, but Exley and Saturn are forced to retreat on seeing the strength of the Commissioners. Also Park Nujin recalls the members of the six, Na Bong Shim, Kim Do Shik, Sa Ha Yong, and Jian Jason to help wage war with Knox. He also gets Nabongshim to mentor Jin Mori and teach him his style ahead of the championship finals. We also meet the other winners of their respective prelims. Worthy of note are Jagak, Jigotek, Ilpio, and Park Sunga.
The announcer states that Team Seoul will be fighting against the team from North Chunchin first and also that the matches consist of three bouts, and the team that wins two bouts will be declared the winner as a result. Jin Mori is to open the bout against Nagi Dong, but due to his overconfidence, the match goes all wrong for him as Jin Mori messes up the technique taught him by Nabangshim. He is unable to move, let alone fight, after activating the wrong pressure points in his body. Nagidong couldn't believe his luck and defeats Jin Mori without a fight. It's Han Dewi's turn to fight Jin Pukwong. The match is a tough one and either fighter struggling to gain any advantage. They repel each other's attack with move after move until Han Dewi performs his Azure Dragon stance and destroys Kwong's Thor hammer, knocking him out to bring the score to a one-all draw. The last bout between Yumira and Yankmi will decide which team wins. Yankmi is determined to win and even employs her chariot, but Yumira's sword skills and belief far on another level. She defeats her with the win Milo's sword style, and thus Team Seoul win their bout and progress to the next round. It's the turn of South Gisang region to fight against the team from North Jella. It also is our first major introduction to Jigo Tech. Jigal is a member of Nox, but he is only concerned about gaining information from them as to where to find the key rather than help them achieve their objective. Jigal is to fight Jian Jagak, the heir of the Six Sun Corporation and the grandson of Jian Jason. Before Jagak even lifts a finger, Jagal uses his sinister chariot to brutally injure him. The scene is so graphic that Jagak's guardian, Hinden Rush, is into the ring to fight Jigal, but she is met with the same almost fatal fate. As if his attack on her wasn't bad enough, Jigo begins to wickedly stamp on her neck. Han Dewi can't stand the demeaning treatment of Hyunjin, and he enters the ring. But the announcer comes between them and warns Dewi he will face disqualification if he interferes further. Juggok stabilizes a bit and attempts to put up some attack using his lightning move, but Jigo is scarcely harmed and turns to finish him up by piercing him with the sharp teeth of his chariot. The last group of fighters to be announced are the teams from South Cheongsam and South Jella. Even though the team from South Jella loses the first match in the bout, they recover to win after Park Sung outs Mart's Nam Gunjdo and Park Ilpyo defeats Gwim Gi despite Gi employing the help of his chariot. It turns out that Park Ilpyo is able to draw on otherworldly powers as well and matches it skillfully with his Taekyeon technique. During Ilpyo's match, Jin Mori notices the symbol on his Ilpyo's jacket. It is the same symbol on the military jacket his grandfather Jin Taejin wears. Jin Taejin had to be separated from Jin Mori when he was six to protect Mori's life because many people were out to kill him. After the match, Mori is visibly worried about his grandfather. Park Nujin had told him that they had a lead on the whereabouts of his grandfather, but it was highly unlikely that he was still alive after they found spills of his grandfather's blood in a region where there was an explosion. While he lay down thinking, Ilpyo comes to him and introduces himself. He reveals to Jin Morin that his grandfather helped raise him and even asked him to take care of the younger Mori. They exchange pleasantries, but Jigo Tech appears from nowhere to attack Jim Morin from behind. Ilpyo anticipates the attack and protects Mori. The attack seems to be a warning from Jigo as he retreats for the meantime. Jigo personally has some history with Ilpyo. Their animosity began in their regional prelims where Jigo broke Sunyin's ledge during their fight as Sunyin is a close friend of Ilpyo. Ilpyo beat Jigo mercilessly asking him to apologize. Jigal is greatly embarrassed and vows to have his revenge hence the surprise attacks on Ilpio. The next day is Jin Mori's birthday. Mira and Dewi surprise him by cooking sumptuous meals for Mori to enjoy. The next morning after Mori's birthday, he wakes up to a mail at his door with a picture of his captured grandfather and a map to the location. Curious and desperate to be reunited with his grandfather, Jin Mori jumps on his bicycle and follows the direction on the map without letting his friends or anybody aware of where he was going. The quarterfinal is about to begin, and the Seoul team is to fight against the team from Jeju. Han Dewi and Yumir are worried and are looking for Mori. They would have to forfeit the match if Mori doesn't arrive when it's his turn to fight. Yumir agrees to fight first in order to buy some time while Han Dewi goes to search for him. Jin Mori arrives at the warehouse where he sees his grandfather bound with chains on the floor. He is distraught and tries to undo the chains. But just as he is about to do this, there is a heavy explosion from a device put in the body of his grandfather. The body Jin Mori saw was a clone rather than the actual body of his grandfather. 
The explosion is so great but Jin Mori somehow manages to survive. Just then a member of Knox nicknamed Doppelganger comes into the scene. He expects Mori to be dead but he is disappointed to find him alive. Doppelganger as his name goes is able to multiply himself into many clones at the same time. They all come against Jin Mori but he manages to just hold them off. While on the floor, Jin Mori notices the bodies of the members of the Jeju team and understands that they've been assassinated by Nox and impersonated in the fight. Back at the arena, the fight between Yumira and Lee Marin gets underway. He is strong and physically intimidating, and though Mira is not discouraged, she predicts a long fight. As the fighting proceeds, Lee Marin reveals to Mira that he has her sword, the Moonlight Sword. He mocks Mira for having the sword all the while and being ignorant of its immense power. He uses the sword against Mira and injures her terribly and as a result the match swings in favor of the Jeju team. Mira is down and enters into a trance where she talks to a heavenly being. The power asks Mira if she would continue or succumb to defeat. She refuses to give up and the being bestows his power upon her thereby obtaining its chariot. As a result, Yumira becomes stronger and recovers her sword and with the help of her newfound powers, she easily puts away the clone Lee Marin. On discovering that Doppelganger masterminded the killing of the Jeju team and cloning Nox members to fight in their place, Jin Mori becomes enraged and he relentlessly beat Pei Long, that is, Doppelganger. Back at the arena, everyone awaits Jin Mori still but just as the commissioner is about to wave the match, he shows up much to the excitement of everyone in the arena. During Mori's fight, he performs the same moves on his opponent and ends him with his special Jin Mori original 2 technique to send Team So into the semifinals of the competition. Meanwhile, the battle between Nox and the Earth Clan is at its hottest point as Jigo, Mendia, the leader of Nox, and Park Nujin make serious efforts to discover the key that rules God himself as the stage is set for the custodian of the key to be revealed amongst the semi-finalists of the God of High School. Mandiak faces off with Park Mu Jin as Il Pil faces Jin Mori in the ring. Commanded by Mandiak, Nox members move towards the arena but are met by the commissioners, who resist them in a heated battle. Mandiak also activates a portal that releases God's Sword of Judgment and God himself to rot Jug the men on the earth, but Park Mu Jin stages a defense to repel the sword. One of the six, Sro Halley, and also conjures several assaults on the sword and destroys it much to the chagrin of Mandiac, who disappears to better plan his next attack. Back in the ring, the fight between Mori and Ilpio is more of a fighting lesson for Mori as Park Ilpio predicts every move Mori makes and reveals his mistakes. Mori has to dig in to find a way to beat Ilpio and launches an attack that lands Ilpio down. While Ilpio is down, he remembers the promise he made to Jin Taejin to groom and look after Jin Mori. But he decides he cannot afford to lose as well. Everyone watches in amazement as the key is activated in Ilpio. The energy from the key causes the energy of all those with Chariot to resonate. The key represents the power of the Nine Fox Spirit, who was appointed the guardian of God's throne and the heavenly realm. Due to his increasing power and influence, God thought to cast him out of the heavens. The spirit became angry and is able to destroy two third of heaven because of his immense power but is eventually cast down to the earth. After falling, he fell into deep sleep but not before he swears to have his revenge on God for treating him so badly. Whoever has the key is a threat to the supremacy of God. With his newfound power, Ilpio dominates Jin Mori but out of nowhere Jin Mori activates his own chariot and stunts everybody to defeat Ilpio. Meanwhile, Jigo Tech has his eyes set on obtaining the key. He goes to the hospital where Ilpio is recovering, but on getting there, he meets Jagok first. Jagok has not forgotten what Jigo did to him, is determined to fight and defeat Jigo. But he is too weak to even cause Jigo the slightest harm. He only loses his mind and begins to absorb anyone within his reach. He absorbs Park Sunga and Eonbuk, and it results in Sunga's ledge being amputated. Eonbuk losing his arm. Jigo kills Jagok and turns to attack Ilpio. At the same time, Mandiac reappears and again opens the portal to allow God to descend and destroy the earth. This time a host of other miniature spirits are released alongside as well and they infest the city. Seeing the injuries to his friends, Lee Pio is enraged and attacks Jigo with all his might but Jigo is so strong that he uses his chariot to engulf Lee Pio and separate the key from his body. 
A tussle ensues on who gets his hands on the key. Eventually, the key ends up in the hands of Jin Morin, but in order to keep the citizens safe, Park Mujin uses his power to teleport the fighters to another place. While there, Jin Mori begins to look for his friends as they are separated during the teleport. Mori finds Park Sunga and Ilpyo at first and later finds Daewi and Mira. He discovers Daewi being in a fight with Jago who is bent on getting the key from Mori and the two begin to fight. Back in Seoul, a heavy frenzy is caused by the impending judgment of God. The allies of Japan initiate an airstrike to fight the invasion. Coupled with the commissioners fighting the heavenly creatures could the residents of the city are terrified and desperately look for shelter. Jion Jizen, one of the six and father of Jagak decides to take it upon himself to repel the attack and rescue the people in the city. He teleports all the humans in the region including the fighters to a safe place and destroys the descending power which is God with his strong power and alchemy technique. At the new location, Jago incapacitates Jin Morin with his chariot and proceeds to seize the key and infuses it in himself. The key is activated in him and he becomes extraordinarily powerful, becoming more stronger than God himself. After obtaining the power, Jigo's only obsession is to destroy everyone and everything. Han Dewi and Yumira try to resist him, but their efforts amount to nothing. Only Jin Morin is able to bring him any trouble, let alone defeat him because of the power of the key. Jin Mori is left to be creative, and like he always does in critical moments, he activates a new ability. The ability is drawn from his spiritual roots as the descendant of the Monkey King, and it's so powerful Jin Morin is able to greatly suppress Jigo, even causing a lightning strike to electrify him. The story ends as Kim Un Young, one of the six and the most powerful of them all who has been asleep for ages, is accidentally awakened. She reveals herself and asks the winners of the God of High School tournament, which are the last standing contestants, Han Dewi, Yu Mira, and Jin Mori, to ask their wishes as the reward for emerging winners. Han Dewi and Yu Mira say they have no special wishes, and Jin Mori initially wishes for him to be reunited with his grandfather Jin Tae Jin, but changes his mind after seeing Park Sungu and Dianbik's amputated limbs. More in wishes for everyone injured in the battle to have their body and health restored. Kim Won Gyun grants the request, and Park Sungu and Dianbik have new limbs. The movie ends after Jin Mori wakes up from his three months sleep because of his exertion in the battle, and the free friends joke about traveling to discover the roots of Mori's amazing power. If you love our work and would love to see more from us, please don't forget to support us. Hit the like button on this video and subscribe to our channel and click the bell to be notified when we post again.